happy so having you happy here. Happy to have you. But we gotta say, Captain Phasma yes. has returned. But before we before we go there, I wanna ask you, how was it when you found out you got this role and you're gonna be a part of this whole Star Wars universe? Uh, I'd wanted to be in Star Wars my whole life, you know. Yay. I've been a fan since I was six years old when I first saw the films. And I remember saying to my mother, because I, I wanted to be an actor since I was very young, and I said, God, I really want to be in a in a Star Wars movie. And my mother's saying, well, they don't make them anymore. And then when I heard that this was coming back, you know, I was cheering along with the rest of the world, thinking, we're going to have it again. Star Wars is coming back. And I really wanted to be a part of it. And also, when I saw how diverse the casting was, yeah. that's what excited me. When I saw... <laughs> reflected in our entertainment so I wanted to be a part of that more than ever so did you get the word out through your people um, <laughs> I mean I was just constantly going on and on and on about it and uh, and I would just every phone call everything say oh they're interested in you for this I want to be in Star Wars <laughs> oh, do you want, you've got a meeting for this I want to be in Star Wars I mean I was relentless about it and then I was very lucky to hear that they were interested so cool. and uh, cool. and then it was a very slow sort of process because we didn't know if it would work with my schedule for Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. And then they were very generous and accommodating. Um, but when I knew it was happening was when I came in for the costume fitting. And I saw that costume. And I knew about the character, but seeing that they had decided to create this female character who looked incredible, but her femininity... It's not delineated in the shape of her body. It's not about her exposing her gender. It's about who she is and how we relate to her <laughs> So now you've got... Now you've got these two massive armies of fans behind you. They're going to have to duke it out, the Game of Thrones fans and the Star Wars fans. <laughs> well, they're very passionate fan bases. I mean... Yeah. I bet there's I, a lot of crossover. Yeah, yeah, I think there really is. Because it's something about... Um, something about the fantastical realm that I think mm -hmm. allows us to relate to the human experience in a closer way. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. intimacy can be very difficult in our modern age, but somehow when there's an epic landscape visually, those human relationships seem to speak to us more. I get this. I, I get this. <laughs> <laughs> about uh, growing up and, and wanting to be in Star Wars and I understand that you really connect it with Princess Leia. Yeah, I really How do. So? Well, you know, I'm someone that um, I've always been obsessed with, with television and with movies and I've watched them from a very, very early age. And um, I, I loved that visual medium of storytelling mm -hmm. and I wanted to be an actor. But what I was aware of, even very early on, is that I wasn't seeing me. Mm. I felt I was oh. seeing a homogenized version of what it was to be a woman. But that didn't discourage you? No, it didn't, because I've always had a certain degree of optimism. Because I've been so interested in, in arts and in, in people and the human experience, just the business of being human like we all are, that I felt that the world would change. And in looking at history and looking at the way the world had changed, I, I felt that that would be expressed in our storytelling. So I remember watching Star Wars and thinking, looking at Princess Leia and looking at Carrie Fisher and thinking, she is different. She's unafraid. She's smart. She's brave. She's bold. She's unashamedly herself. She's hilarious. And she and she doesn't look the same as all those other kinds of representations that we're given. Lunch. In this film, you're, you and John Boyega um, share a lot of moments. Can you can you share with us a little bit about this whole battle scene or? Yes, I mean, <laughs> talk um, to us a little bit about it. Okay. We love him. He was just here. He, he loves John you. John is an incredible man. And he has, he is. He's amazing. He's so talented. But he has this vital energy that just really inspires everyone around him. We have no I idea what him. you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I can tell you, I believe there's been a trailer in which you've seen some contact. 
Yes. We've seen a moment of contact. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what I can tell you is that I was reunited with Cece Smith and the amazing Liang. But, but Cece Smith taught me to fight on Game of Thrones. Uh -huh. So back before season two st filming started on Game of Thrones, he was the man that gave me the confidence and the skills and worked with me for months beforehand and taught me to fight and sword fight. Should we take a little peek? Please. <laughs> Well, you know, we don't have a peek of the battle, but what we do have a you peek know, of, so, uh, we have a okay. message from one of your co-stars about the battle. Ooh. Here we go. Ooh. Check it out. Hey, Gwen. How you doing? I hope you're good. I just wanted to say hi and hope to uh, see you soon. Remember, who wins the fight? Oh. Oh. See you there. See you there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. Somebody looks yeah. a little, you look like you're looking... <laughs> Competition, like She's you go back in the ring. <laughs> I, I, I like that little twinkle in her eye right now. Uh, but, but the look is confusing because the look doesn't say if you won or if you didn't win. Wait, wait a minute. Go ahead. I just think, you know, <laughs> winning is a perception. Oh! <laughs> wow. in the theaters on December the 15th. Make sure you go check it out. I know I am. This is one of the best things ever. And courtesy of our friends. No, we're not done yet. Courtesy of our friends at IMAX, everyone in our audience, you're going to get tickets to see it, okay?